Welcome to SOC 211 class. The course information is this. SOC 211 is titled Introduction to Population Studies. It is a three credit unit course, elective, and you can find the facilitator's information here. My name is Ma'il Hussein Mshelia. Other of my details are found here. You have the overview of the course. The course, population studies, can also be called demography. You must have been hearing of demography. It is the same as population studies. And the whole essence of the course is to introduce students to the study of the size composition, growth, and distribution of human population. The course is making serious attempts, or will make serious attempts, to highlight the demographic factors that affect human population. At the same time, it will make attempts to introduce students to the social variables that are also affecting the size and the distribution of human population. Also, it is within the scope of the course to highlight the global trend of the growth and characteristics of human population. So these are the major areas this particular course is concerned with. You can find the structure of the course. The structure is in seven places. In other words, the course is structured into seven study sessions. We begin with introduction and we end with issues that revolve around global population. That is the population of the world, not just a particular country. We have recommended textbook for this very course. We have James Henslin, Sociology, a down-to-earth approach. We have a report from the Nigerian government, that is from Nigerian National Population Commission, and we have a data from Yale University, which is also very much relevant. So it is very, very advisable that you contact or you consult these materials in order to learn more about this course. Here is the general information of the course. You can go through it. It talks about assignments, assessments, homework, attendance, and final examination. These are standard guidelines in every academic endeavor. We have the grading policy for this particular course. The course is actually having 100 obtainable marks, but the 100 obtainable marks are structured into three places, first TME, second TME, and final examination with each having 15, 15, and 70, respectively. We have the course rules, or the class rules. As you know, no human setting will work effectively without having rules. So this very study session is guided by rules. They are written here. You can go through them for your scrutiny and expected adherence. We have the study session duration. The seven study sessions we have highlighted earlier on are having two, two hours each. So each of the seven study sessions is going to take you a minimum of two hours. But you are advised to spend more than two hours 
for your revision and further reading on whatever you have learned in each of the study sessions. We have the behavioral objectives of the course. Behavioral objectives are actually talking about those learning outcomes that are expected of you having undertaken this course. You are expected to be able to define some basic concepts relating to human population. You are expected to know the demographic variables that affect human population. You are expected to be able to scientifically study or to scientifically explain human population size and growth. So, all these are objectives that are expected of you at the end of the seven study sessions. It is supposed to be a guide or a yardstick for you to know whether or not you have achieved the objective of taking this course. At the end of the course, if there is any of the items we have highlighted here which has not reflected in you, then it means you have not actually gotten what is supposed to be acquired in this very course. We go straight to the, st to the study session one, which is titled Introduction. It is to introduce us to the rudiments of population studies. First, we have the meaning of population studies. When we say population studies, what really are we talking about? It is defined and the definition is having some basic concepts that you are supposed to actually understand. It is defined as a scientific study of human population. The basic concepts here is the concept of science. If it is a scientific study, it implies that it is a study that is utilizing some systematic methods in the process of acquiring information and divulging information. In other words, population studies is not utilizing haphazard methods in the process of its inquiries. It is making use of systematic methods. The use of these systematic methods in the process of its investigation qualifies it to be termed a scientific discipline. As a scientific discipline, what really is population studies concerned with? Population studies is concerned with four major elements. It is first of all concerned with scientifically studying the size of human population. When we talk about size, we are talking about how big or how small a human population is. Population studies is making use of scientific methods to study the size of human population. Secondly, population studies is making use of scientific methods to measure the growth of human population. Whether small or big, population studies is trying to know how is human population actually increasing or decreasing over time. That is the growth of human population. The growth can actually be upward, it can be downward. Thirdly, population studies is concerned with scientifically studying the distribution of human population. When we talk about distribution, we are talking about the components of human population and the ratio each of the component is occupying in relation to the entire population. Every population is having different continents, is having different components rather. 
all these components are actually having different number in relation to the general population. So population studies is meant to introduce you to the understanding of how human population is being distributed into which categories and how are each of the categories measured in relation to the others. These are the major components of population studies. We look at the significance of population studies. Having known what it is all about, we need to understand, is it really significant to us? Is it really important? Of course, the answer is yes. And here are reasons why we should understand that population studies is very significant to us. Among other things, population studies is helping us to understand the factors that affect population. There are different categories of factors that affect human population. Basically, we have biological factors and we have social factors. So population studies is trying to introduce us to the understanding of the social and the biological factors that affect human population. In that respect, population studies is a significant or relevant discipline to us. It also helps us to understand the process and consequences of population growth. Population does not grow over time. It does grow rather over time. Population studies is telling us the consequences of this growth of human population. In that respect, population studies is also very significant. Thirdly, population studies is helping us to predict the future trend of population growth. How is population going to be over time? If today the population of a particular society is 50 million, how is it likely going to be in the next 10 or 20 years? Population studies as a scientific discipline is making use of scientific methods to predict the very trend or the very dimension the population of every society is going to take in the future. In that respect, population studies is also a very significant discipline. Furthermore, population studies is helping us to know the various aspects of population management. How is population supposed to be managed? How is population supposed to be planned? These are questions that are answered by population studies. In that respect, population studies is a relevant or significant discipline. Then we look at the meaning of population itself. We have taken a look at the meaning of population studies and we have been talking about population, population, population. The question now is, what is population? Population is simply referring to the total number of humans who are living in a particular society at a particular period of time. The underlining word here is the word total. When you say the population of a particular society is this, what you are just saying is the total number of people 
in this very society is this. So the word total is the most relevant word in the definition of population. The next relevant word in the definition is the word people or humans. Different disciplines have different conception of population. In this very context, which is a social context, population is referring to humans, not the total number of animals, not the total number of insects or any other organism. It is talking about the total number of humans. So while defining population, these two major concepts or these two major words have to manifest. First, the word total. Secondly, the word humans or people or any of its variants. One issue you have to very much acknowledge and which makes the study of human population very tricky is the fact that human population is very dynamic. By saying it is dynamic, we mean human population is changing over time. If it is 10 million today, in the next five hours, it is no longer exactly 10 million. It must have changed. As a result of some occurrences, there are basically three occurrences that are changing the population of every society. We have the natural occurrence of birth, which is increasing the number of people. We have the natural occurrence of death, which is decreasing the number of people. And we have the social occurrence of migration, which may be people coming in or people going out of that particular society. And this is also changing human population over time. So these changes that occur over time in human population is what actually make the study of population very tricky. Otherwise, it will have been a very simple discipline or simple social phenomenon that may not even be relevant to be studied. We look at the sources of population data, having known the meaning of population. How are demographers or those who study human population acquiring information about the population of different societies? When we say population studies, we are talking about studying human population. And we say population is the total number of people. Now, how is this data acquired? There are major ways of acquiring this population data. Number one, population data can be acquired through population census. Population census is simply the general headcount of all the people living in a particular society at a particular period of time. Census is usually conducted by the government of a country, and it is usually periodic, and it is regular. Periodic in the sense that it may be in every five years. Regular in the sense that it doesn't take too much time. The second source of population data is registration system. Demographers are actually acquiring population data from registration systems. Different governments of different countries are having different registration systems. Now, demographers at times make use of registration systems to be able to know the actual number of people in that society. In Nigeria, we have the bank verification system. Population experts may seek population data from the central bank. 
based on the actual number of people that are captured by the bank verification system. We have the National Identity Management Commission, which also captured a good number of people living in Nigeria. Population experts may seek data from those at the helm of affairs there, and it will give them insight on the number of people that are living in this particular society. There are other different registration systems in different countries. Population experts are seeking population data from all these different registration systems. We have national register. I have already made mention of Nigerian Identity Management Commission. It is a national register. Population Commission is also having national registers of all the people giving birth to in the country at different period of times. All these data are being used by population experts to be able to estimate the number of people in a society or the number of any category of human population in that society. Then finally, we have surveys. Surveys simply mean seeking primary data from individuals in the society. Population experts are sometimes conducting survey to be able to know the number of people living in a particular place for the purpose of their study. These are the four major sources of population data that are being utilized by population experts or by demographers. We have identified population census as one of the sources of population data because of its relevance, because of its significance or importance, we have highlighted it here to acknowledge and understand it. It is defined as the enumeration of all the people living in a particular country at a particular period of time. When we say enumeration, we are talking about counting. So population census simply refers to the counting of all the people that are living in a particular society at a particular period of time. And I have made mention of the fact that population census is being conducted by the government of a country. And it is conducted at a periodic and regular intervals. Population census is not actually revealing only the total number of people. Beyond that, population census is giving the distribution of human population. When we talk about distribution, we are talking about the different components or the different categories of human population and the number of people that are occupying these different categories. Male, female, these are two different categories. Population census is revealing data on the number of male, number of females in a society. We have the old, young, infants, and what have you. Population census is revealing an estimated number of people that are filling all these categories on the basis of age. There are other numerous bases for distribution of human population. Population census is very, very much making attempt to reveal the number of people that occupy all these different categories. In a nutshell, the introductory aspects of this course has told us the meaning of population studies. And I have made mention of the fact that we must acknowledge that it is a scientific study. And we must understand that it is focusing specifically on knowing the size, the growth, distribution of human population. We have highlighted the significance of population studies. We have acknowledged four major significance of population studies. Of course, there are more. 
it helps us to know the biological and the social factors that influence population. It helps us to know the consequences of population growth as well as the processes. It helps us to predict future trends of every country's population. And it helps us to know the various aspects of population management, how we can manage our population, or how every society can manage its population for effective national policies and planning. And we have taken a look at the meaning of population as a concept. We said population refers to the total number of people that live in a particular society at a particular period of time. Two words I have highlighted in the definition of population are number one, total, number two, people or humans. In every definition of population, in this very context, these two words have to be very visible. It is the total number of people living in a particular society at a particular period of time. We have highlighted the fact that population is dynamic. Dynamic in the sense that it changes over time. And there are three major factors that lead to these changes. Two are natural factors. One is social factor. The two natural factors are birth and death. Birth, increasing population. Death, decreasing population. The third factor being migration is a social factor. And it can increase population and it can decrease population at the same time. If people get out of your country, the population decrease. If you come into a country, the country's population increase. So migration is performing the functions of birth and death, respectively. Then we looked at the sources of population data. We have highlighted four sources, population census, registration systems, national registers, and surveys, which are undertaken primarily to acquire population data. Then finally, we have defined population, population census rather. We have defined for population census as the enumeration or the total counting of all the people living in a particular society. One important issue we have highlighted in the definition of population census is the fact that it does not only reveal the total number of people, it also brings to limelight the composition of human population. This composition is talking about the distribution of human population into different categories. These categories may be age, it may be sex, it may be geographical location, and what have you. So this is the end of this study session. Thank you very much.